hey what is up guys thank you for stopping by today we are taking a look at the latest vesk on the market the vesk 6 that we got in this box right here i just got it in the mail So I also ordered this uh, silicone rubber cover can help uh, give more water resistance and absorb the shock so yep it is a plus so here is a quick comparison in sizes so on the right is uh, the FOC box or Vesk X I think I'm gonna give you a quick look at the inside so this is an antenna wire that we have to pop off the hardware version 6 things I don't like about the VESC 6 is uh, this uh, servo connector I don't know they, they, they should have just uh, used the regular servo connector pins for it but I don't know why they're using this uh, they're using XT90 I'm gonna swap it with a XT60 so here I just took it apart and uh, I'm gonna solder the PPM wires directly to the board so I can uh, run them outside so I can just use a uh, these kind of connectors cut one side and solder right here servo cable solder to the board You wanna uh, stay tuned for the video of me building this one and uh, yep here is the new setup so I had this this was uh, the Meepo speed controller case I took the ESC away and uh, kept the enclosure so I'm going to use that for my new build for the VESC 6 I also ordered the Meepo battery uh, enclosure so I got the VESC 6 back in the mail I'm gonna leave a link to the guy who actually fixed uh, my VESC for me he soldered a servo cable for me so now I don't have to worry about that alright so now let's go ahead and hook that up and see how it goes alright so here I put this aluminum plate inside and I kind of sealed the edges with some hot glue to kind of give it a, a sort of water resistance so yep now I'm gonna use some thermal paste that I'm gonna spread all over here and uh, place the, the controller just right there it can help for heat dissipation the connector from the battery to the ESC is set
the ESC is hooked up. If you wonder what this switch does is uh, I added a, an external battery port right here. You know, XT60 connector that I left out. When this battery runs out, I can go ahead and hook up an external battery. And this three position switch is used to, at this position it is off. If I switch to the right, it is using the internal battery. And if I go ahead and push it on the other side, it's using now the external battery. So it's pretty nice to have that, so yeah. Right, we have the ESC lit, the receiver blinking, waiting for connection. Here is my remote. All right, steady light on both controller and receiver. So, so I know why it does that. Due to the sensor wires, I have to run a motor detection from the computer for it to work. Alright, so next step is to go ahead and hook the ESC to the computer and uh, configure it. It is time to configure the VESC. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the VESC to the computer. Then I will go ahead and launch the VESC tool. We'll go ahead and turn on the VESC. We got lights. I'm gonna go also. I'm, I'm also going to go ahead and turn my remote. Steady light is connected. Then I will go ahead and connect all right here it says that the VESC has a uh, old firmware so this is about uh, updating the VESC firmware so we're gonna go ahead and close this and proceed to the VESC update on the left on the left hand side you can see a menu a welcome wizard connection then firmware we're gonna go ahead and select firmware and on the tab you can see the only option here is 60 if you are using a a different uh, what's that a, a different VESC you will have more options to select the right version for your VESC so here I'm using the VESC 6 that's why I, uh, I have the option 6.0 all right so we're gonna go ahead and select that all right and go ahead and hit the sort of download icon at the bottom right right here and once we click that gonna give us a warning so we want to go ahead and select yes we want to continue and then you can see the progress bar at the bottom right here. So the VESC is updated, all right? From here, when the VESC is updated, the computer is going to automatically disconnect the VESC. So you need to uh, reconnect it to continue, all right? So we can go ahead and go back on the welcome wizard and go down to connect. And you can see the new firmware version right here. So configuring um, the VESC using the VESC tool is pretty simple. It's not like the uh, the BDC tool. This is pretty simple. They made it very simple. You can go ahead and hit motor setup. All right. Go ahead and read all of these. Next. Now you go ahead and set default configuration. Yes. All right, now we want to go ahead and run FOC, so we leave it at FOC and hit next. All right, we are about to configure current limits, so we're going to make sure we set the right values for the current limits. All right, so I'm using a torque ball 
6374 millimeter motor it is rated up to 80 amps but I'm going to go safe and uh, put that limit to 40 amps and uh, this is motor current max 40 amps all right so um, in your case you want to make sure you put uh, a right value according to what you uh, want because uh, this value also uh, also affect the torque all right so the next value is motor current max brake this is how powerful you need your brake to be the higher this value is the harder your brake is I mean um, not considering the negative sign all right so negative 60 negative 60 the brake is going to be super strong but at negative 40 for example you have a pretty decent braking so I'm gonna leave it to negative 40 and anytime you can come here and go ahead and modify if you don't like it all right so next is the battery current max I'm going to go ahead and set that to 25 make sure you check with your battery all right so and the battery current max regen this is how much amps you want to push to charge your battery when braking I'm going to go ahead and leave that at 10 amps negative 10 amps all right once we do that we can go ahead and check everything is all right we go ahead and hit next yes all right we want to go ahead and set up the voltage limits here I'm using a 10s battery pack so I'm gonna go ahead and we only have a lithium ion batteries by default it's 12s I'm using a 10s I put 10 and then it will automatically generate uh, some cutoff star and cutoff ends for the battery here you want to make sure you apply before exiting when you hit apply you can see that these value values are going to change all right so it becomes 34 it means that at 34 volts your board is going to start slowing down and at 31 volts it's going to just shut down all right so we want to go ahead now and hit next all right so here it's about the sensors here I'm using sensor wires so I'm gonna go ahead and select sensor hold sensors all right then next all right so here is the motor detection you want to go ahead and it is just simple you just follow these steps one by one so this is if you need some help you don't you need like a quick overview of how these settings works here is a window for that all right so I'm going to go ahead and hit the RL icon hit OK and you can see that your motor is making a weird noise all right don't worry about that that's pretty normal after it does that so these green boxes means that uh, it was successful all right so we want to go ahead and measure this one too go ahead and hit OK and this would spin your motor all right and you can see that everything turned green all right after that you can go ahead and hit apply and it's going to apply those values as well then go ahead and hit next all right this is the whole sensor detection table you want to just go ahead and measure with this small icon right here hit ok a weird noise with a little bit of spinning all right and that will also change those values too so make sure you apply all the time you do something new you make sure you apply then hit next and finish so that was it for the motor setup
now we want to go ahead and go to the next step which is the app setup click that this is everything uh, related to the the connection between your uh, VESC the receiver and the remote all right so we want to go ahead and hit next okay here I'm using a single VESC so I'm gonna select single VESC next I'm using just this kind of remote so I'm gonna go ahead and hit next and here we want to go ahead and and uh, calibrate our uh, throttle mapping this is about giving information about the remote when it's all the way engaged versus when it's all the way released or break all right as you can see here it is saving the net the, the smallest value of the the ppm signal and the higher value of it once you do that you can go ahead and hit apply all right so you can see now that the the rest is all the way at the middle and now it's kind of proportional to to your your braking and your acceleration all right after that you want to make sure you apply it's important apply then go ahead and hit next all right so yep here is just set up current no reverse with brake that's what I do all the time and you can leave these values right here you don't need to touch nothing here make sure you write to VESC then hit next and finish so from now you can go ahead and disconnect and enjoy the ride so I'm going to quickly put everything together and go out for a test ride all right so that is set up nice the battery right here and uh, bolts and nuts let's go ahead and hook that up all right so then you have it build is done Alright, so whenever this battery goes down, I can just go ahead and use an external battery, hook it up right here, and switch to external battery. I have so many of them that I can connect on the external. Here it is. And I'm building more more and more All right so I have made these boxes with straps so I just put it on the board and strap it up and I keep going so that's it for this video if it was helpful make sure to drop a like subscribe and stay around for upcoming videos thank you for watching see you around